Surviving the crash was just the beginning now. I'm facing the hardest truth art of all. I don't love my husband anymore. How do I tell him that the man I once loved and I is a stranger to me? And objectively, I don't know why I should care about him. I don't want to go on dates with him or hang around or do whatever I used to do with him. I've told him I feel a bit disconnected with my memories and past emotions, but I haven't told him that I don't love him anymore. I've talked about it with a psychiatrist, and she said this wasn't uncommon among patients. I told my friend and she insisted I should tell him how I feel honestly. Honestly, I may not like my husband, but I feel like that would be cruel. Whipped up for telling my husband I don't love him after my TB. Editor's note to be by has traumatic brain injury. Update. I talked with my husband. I don't want to hurt his feelings and I wanted to fall back in love with him. I sat him down and told him that I felt disconnected from my own emotions and past with him, but my memories with him like I was relieving a movie, not my own life. He guessed that I wasn't in love with him, and he sobbed and begged me not to leave him. It was heartbreaking, and I reassured him that I wasn't going anywhere. I wanted to build up my emotions again and reconnect with my past memories about him. So we decided I would go back to the doctors to figure out how I can do that, and in the meantime, we would go on dates where he was trying to win me over again. Some have asked me what kind of behaviors I didn't like. When I was in the hospital, he would always crawl into bed and cram me into the corner. At our date, he talked through the entire movie and had his flash on when he was taking pictures of me. I didn't ask him to take pictures. He just likes taking ugly pictures of me. He complains a lot. When we were at the restaurant, he kept complaining about the food he ordered to the waiter. He pokes me a lot. He also whines. And he made me eat dessert even if I don't want to. And he never stops talking but I focused on the bigger things. He's very attentive and affectionate towards me. He likes to buy me little gifts that he makes me try, and he was at my side the entire time even if he did get kicked out by the nurses for annoying them. I know I can rely on him to be there for me, which is the most important thing. At the end of the date, we actually slept together for the first time since my accident, which was less than a year ago, but it had been a couple months since I was cleared to have sex. We hadn't really been romantic and intimate, so it really did feel like I was with an annoying best friend, but I wanted to fall back in love with him. We used to be frequently intimate before my accident. This entire paragraph is very embarrassing to write, so please skip if you are like me and easily embarrassed by PDA. He's actually incredible and I swear I fell back in love with him for a few seconds. I honestly am much more inclined to ignore all of his annoying habits or even find them cute. We slept together in the morning too and the second day of dating went a lot better. I'm not fully in love with him yet and I want to reforge the deeper connection because I know I loved him for a lot more and I do not want my affection for him resting solely on one thing. I've started a journal of all the things I like and love about him. Hopefully it gets filled soon. Edit to answer a few questions I got. Yes, it was a movie theater. The other moviegoers were not happy. This isn't new behavior. She always talked a lot and was in my personal space even before my accident. When I was recovering, the nurses kicked him out for annoying them, but they let him back in after a bit. Editor's note, this isn't a comment from the op, but one of the top voted comments. I found it had an interesting perspective, so wanted to add it here. Here's the thing. Everything you mentioned about him that really bothers you is all stuff that you'd never notice during the dating and courtship phase, and they're all things people sort of hide during those early days. The part where you're getting to know each other and all that happens when you're falling in love. These things you don't like, they're all a part of the man you love. But you forgot them all and are experiencing them fresh as if they are new. And you no longer have the larger context that they're small parts of the man you love. He isn't even aware they're so apparent to you, probably. In the early parts, we're all in our best behavior and somewhat nervous and guarded. But he's not at all, and why should he be? To him, you're his wife who he loves and nearly lost. He's just happy to have you, probably thrilled and more in love with you than ever. You're seeing all these imperfections in him that are real and maybe never really bothered you before because he's so comfortable around you that he's just himself. Because he loves you. Give him a really good, solid chance because it sounds like he's earned it and it sounds like he sure loves you. I hung up on my girlfriend because her mom was listening to our conversations. I'm upset. I, 18M, have been dating my girlfriend, 17F, for about seven months. Tonight her and I had a deep conversation about some relationship hiccups and I shared personal family struggles I typically only discuss with my therapist. As we finally got to a place we felt comfortable leaving things. I heard whispering in the background. When I asked my girlfriend about it, she adamantly denied anyone else being there. However, as I continued asking, she started crying. Just then, her mom pretended to come in the room and scold her for being up to try to cover up the fact she'd been sitting there for an hour. Turns out, her mom has been sneakily listening in on almost every serious conversation or argument we've ever had, so felt absolutely betrayed and hung up immediately. 
Since then, both my girlfriend and her mom have been apologizing and trying to shift blame onto me. This violation of privacy has left me feeling super violated and unsure about how to handle the situation. I do feel bad for hanging up so abruptly, but I just didn't know how to process what was going on. Am I the a-hole for hanging up on my girlfriend after after discovering her mom was spying during our personal conversations? So any guidance on navigating this situation would be greatly appreciated. Eat it, I woke up an hour ago and watched all the comments come in while eating a wholeless margarita pizza. Thank you all for your advice and opinions. To provide more context, throughout our relationship, my girlfriend has often joked about how her mom can get any information from her. However, I've witnessed firsthand how true this is lately. I've also noticed that my girlfriend doesn't respect privacy, claiming she needs a confidant because my situations are too much for her mentally, but then her mom knows everything I share in confidence. I also have tried not talking to her, but she pushes every time. Because of this, I've become extremely cautious about sharing personal details. They're both very religious, and while I share the same beliefs, it's been a contentious issue in our relationship. Her mom has used religion to justify intruding on my personal life, citing the need to guide me if I'm sinning. My own family life has been challenging. I had to move out at 18 to escape. I talked to my own mother about all of this and her response was to say that it was not the worst thing and I was overreacting, which is why I felt like posting. Her mom has expressed that she sees me as part of her family, which has led to her trying to control various aspects of my life, like dictating when I can drink coffee or imposing a bedtime. She's also shared my private struggles with her pastor and best friend, who've tried to intervene and fix me. I deeply care for my partner, but I can't envision a future where her mother's involvement is so intense in our lives. I plan to talk to her about this tonight and will update you all afterward. Eat it. How did mom listen in? She sat in the room and my girlfriend had the phone on speaker. I thought nothing of it because she has always just put me on speaker in her room. Now I see why. Update. She just called me at work. She started the conversation by saying she thinks we should probably break up because she can't do it anymore. I'll be honest, I snorted. She asked why, and I responded by asking her if it was because she was scared to talk to me face to face, or if it was she just didn't want to deal with the fact she screwed up and hurt me. She said it was because I say everything is her fault. For context, I know I have a lot of problems because of a really hard home life and upbringing, and I acknowledge when I make mistakes. Last night was mostly me having to apologize and explain myself over and over. But this time, I flat out told her this was 1,000% her and her mom's fault. I then had to go because I'm at work and people needed help. I then got the text saying things like, I guess this is all my fault and I deserve to sit in my consequences apparently. She wants me to come to her house after work to sort things out. I think I am going to see if we can meet alone in a public place to ensure privacy. I'll update after that. Final update, we ended up breaking up it after. She apologized in the end, but trust was gone.